So now we have him. We have Hurricane Andres and Andres over the past. Alright, uh, let's explain what happened over the past 24 hours. Around this time, shortly after I made my last video, Andre started to suffer from, for some dry, from some dry air and you can see there's still a little bit, but most of it's off to the northwest now, and it's done a pretty good job all in all mixing it out, I mean, there's been a few bouts, like right around here, you can see just a tad bit of it, but it's really done a, actually a pretty nice job, for the most part, of keeping the dry air, I mean, the microwave pass earlier, I'll show it in a sec. I might, I, might, I, might, I might pull it up in a sec, but the microwave pass you showed the same thing. No. The microwave pa pass you showed um, some dry air still in the core, but it's getting better organized, as you can see. I mean, here's a visible shot of it, you can see now. This structurally re Resembles what you typically see in a T4.5, which on the Dvorak run, which on the Dvorak scale, which corresponds to about 77 knots. So if I was the guy doing the Dvorak run now, I mean, how much banding? Cause assuming you use a banding pattern, and how much banding is? What do you consider any of this alpha banding? Is subject for some debate, and you as such you can argue for a higher. 4.0 or lower, I mean, higher, 5.0 or lower, 4.0 estimate. However, the core is well organized, and it's very, very good alpha, especially the southwest, and, and now it's starting to the northeast a little bit, really good alpha. Those are excellent indicators of significant intensification, which contradicts to what most people I know have significantly backed off of intensification of this hurricane. However, the latest trend suggests it has just as good of a chance of rapid intensification as ever, Gotta keep in mind that hurricanes in the East Pacific naturally do suffer some dry intrusions. Sometimes at a weaker stage than what Andres did, they usually recover and they usually bomb out. I mean, if an, if a major hurricane forecast busts in the East Pacific, it's usually due to some shear. It's usually due to wind shear, not dry air. I mean, look at Hurricane Adrian, Christina, um, a few others like close to you know, like midsummer, like Hurricane Daniel in 2012. Hold on a sec, let me just pull something up. Hold on, excuse me. Alright, here's another look at the thing. I don't know, I found this. This is a little bit cool graphic here. Well, not really cool, but it does show the fact that there's a convectively cool Kelvin wave about to emerge in the East Pacific. Yeah, we've had all this activity without that much convectively cool Kelvin wave support. However, around June 3rd, a convectively cool Kelvin wave is likely to arrive in the East w w Westerly Wind Anomalies, too. Likely fueled by a convectively cool Kelvin wave. These two facts are likely to generate. Some, especially those is very powerful westerly wind burst that's also going to strengthen this El Nino event around, around June 5th. So, associated with the Mercury Kubica wave and could help span our next system. I mean, hold on. Let me pull up this image. I mean, here is, here is Andre's, oh, I should have really thought of this. But here's Andre, here's what Andre is looking like earlier. Now here is what it looks like now, I mean, this is not my Twitter, but. I want to respect some privacy, but this is how it looks like now, and you can see that it's mostly just a banding eyewall, it's kind of gone. The closed eye water as it was marginally and closely as near indicating that and it appears around this time there was a bout of dry air from the north north west and if any quadrant of the storm is any section of the storm is struggling it's this part. But overall, I don't think it should be too significant when it comes to all right. Now regarding the future system. Oh, this is the future future system. Yeah, this is the future system. I mean the latest GFS one brings this Potential block onto a 953 millibar hurricane. Hinting at this hurricane could actually indeed be stronger than Andre. So it's going to be interesting. The Eastern Pacific is going to be like a very interesting site next week. 
I mean, we have the MJO pulls coming around, even though JF is really struggling with it, as a result of getting some weird model runs. It does appear that, in the case of consensus, is that either MJO is going to do some kind of retrograding, retrograding unknown to mankind, because it's so weak right now, or, because if, or the MJO is pretty much going to stick in the East Pacific for a few weeks, and that's, that is somewhat reasonable, and the Western Atlantic, too, because that's but part of the globe is the warmest right now, with the West Pacific having cooled off into the El Nino event. So, we'll see what happens. Now, I should wrap up this video. Bye!